What was that from Tampa this weekend? I don't Jeez. get it. I don't get it. I, you know, actually, I do get it because it's New Orleans, and it's why I can't stand New Orleans this year because they've been a total owned letdown. Tampa in Tampa. I think I think the New Orleans has won like the last four or maybe the last four, last five or something like that. They have literally owned Tampa in Tampa. But, but that's it's what they sh- they should have been all year. Like they well, should have yeah. been this all year, and here we are, and they finally figure it out in week seventeen, and now it sets up all sorts of scenarios coming up in in week eighteen. Well, not and, really. I mean, as long as the Buccaneers win against the Panthers, it's over. Well, listen. I mean, you saw how fired up the owner in Carolina is. All right, that could be a brand new Carolina Panther team coming out this last week of the season. I mean, oh, they yeah. got they got nothing to play for now. You know, number one picks already uh, already been given away. I think so. it's been a, a long period of time. They've had nothing to play for. Yeah, it's uh, man. What? But can, can we just hit on that now? What is yeah. David Tepper thinking? Like, does he think that a nobody has a camera that's watching, and b that's suitable behavior, or is he like, hey, based on all the other evidence I've got on NFL owners and doing stuff, you know, me throwing a uh, some sort of a beer at some guy's direction in the in the back row at a Jaguars game, nobody's gonna nobody's gonna sniff at this. Like, what what sort of what are we talking? Like, if I were to set the over under on the fine for David Tepper, I'm gonna go. Five hundred thousand dollars. You're going oh, over that's, under. That's a. I think it's under. Um, I don't know if it'll be that significant. Uh, maybe it reaches in the six figures, but oh, look, we don't know the the entire story. We don't know what was said or you know how, how he was harassed or not. Whatever case he's going to make for himself, I would just generally say this: he has been since he's taken over as majority owner, probably the biggest issue with that team. <laughs> And I, I say this all the time. And these, I mean, these guys are billionaires, so, like, what do they care? But sometimes you have to remove yourself from the situation and take an even, you know, not a 30,000-foot view. Like, just go sit on the moon for, for a second and, like, let everything work out here on Earth in the football world with football minds and people who have done this for a long time and have been successful doing it. Like, I, I, I truly do believe that. I think there's too often times these billionaires and guys who have success in other industries think that they can immediately translate those skills into another industry and, and be successful. And unfortunately, like, and I said this before, like, when you are someone who's made your living off financial statements and balance sheets and turning around companies or buying, you know, com- you know bankrupt companies and, and flipping them, all that – those are very transactional. The NFL and teams, it's its a people-person business. Those are like relationships with people. You know, a coach to player, et cetera, and then a GM or an owner. Like, you're around people all the time. You have to be transformative in the way in which you, you handle people because that's what you're in the business of. Like, you're in the business of having a team of players – and trying to maximize their potential as humans. And it's not a transactional thing. It's not just like swapping out chess pieces every single year. you got a salary cap. You have only so many um, amounts of, of uh, draft picks to deal with. So at some point, you have to invest in these people, develop them, nurture that, and try to make it something more. It, it's, it's just a different deal. It's a different industry. And I don't know that he sees that. I don't know that he sees that from how he's hired and fired head coaches. I don't know if he understands that's how it works with players. He just thinks he can turn this over quick and turn it over, turn it over. It's like, dude, that doesn't work really. Like, that just makes you look like a clown. And, you know, as far as what happened at the game, again, I don't know what was said to him what wasn't. I mean, there's the human element of things where obviously he's frustrated. But, again, he's going to look in the mirror and be accountable to himself first you know, for that sort of action. And, uh, you know, I, you're, you kind of jump down the wormhole of reading those reports. I'm not sure if you saw this, but someone described David Tepper as the type of guy when he gets bad service at a restaurant. Yeah, I read Instead that. of wanting to fire the waiter, he just buys the, the entire restaurant <laughs> so he fire. can fire the waiter. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and, and, and that might shed a little light on <laughs> his the, the perception of him as a person, which, look, again, I don't want to base it off one account, but I think we all know people who are probably like that. And, and that's not a person that you want to be around. Like, I, I think the best organizations that I was a part of, uh, but the Pat Bowen during his time with the Denver Broncos, or even without uh, in Seattle with the Seahawks, and even the Hunt family in Kansas City, 
the best organizations you're around as far as ownership, you can tell how much they care. And you can tell by how they conduct themselves, how they treat people, and how they lead from an ownership standpoint. Because it's a very interesting role, and I don't think he's figured that out yet. Uh, The part that was really troublesome to me was he's clearly an amateur because he throws the beer and then... Um, by the way, for the sake of the story, I'm going to say it's a beer. Yeah, I was just going to say it did not look like beer. Okay, well, you know, just, we'll just go with beer just to make the story. It looks like better. white wine. Maybe it was a mixed drink, but <laughs> possibly. I'm saying, yeah. Uh, but the part that bothered me the most is that he throws it and then just immediately walks away. Like, what are you, a rookie? You know, if that guy gets up into the booth, there's going to be a pull apart. He's never going to get to you. Stand your ground, David Tepper. You had a, a desk in front of you and two guys that were also by the window. There was no way some dude in a Keenan McCardle throwback jersey was going to get up there and actually get anywhere close to you for some sort of physical contact. Him throwing the drink and then walking away, rookie move. He should be fined a million dollars just based on that alone. If it were me, if I were running the NFL, just saying. So you're Roger Goodell. You're going to come back and say, which is interesting, by the way, because, you know, it's really the other NFL owners who would, would, you know, I I think would call to, hey, someone's got to find him. We got to do something here because Roger Goodell works for the owners. So ultimately, if like Roger Goodell is the one that, you know, makes up some sort of penalty, it's really coming from the other owners who are saying like, this is a bad look for us as a whole in the NFL as owners. we, We probably can't do this. And mind you, I think they're going to be, because it wasn't Jacksonville where it took place, I think they're going to be more cognizant of where they set up opposing teams' owners right. moving forward. It's like, pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Like, maybe we should put him somewhere else where he's a little more protected. <laughs> right. I mean, honestly, like, what they should have done is put David Tepper in a disguise and have him in, like, a bathing suit floating around that hot tub. Right. Out there uh, that, that's, that, that is the move. Yeah. I mean, listen, they did a clown out there a couple years ago in Jacksonville. Uh, you know, if they could sneak if they could sneak Taylor Swift out in a, uh, in a popcorn cart uh, like they allegedly did at Arrowhead Stadium, I mean, they should figure out a way to to hide Dave, David Tepper next time. Well, I mean, you've got a game. bunch of options. I mean, you, you could dress him up like it's Mission Impossible where he's got those, like, plastic faces they just rip off. Right. I mean, he could sit wherever he wants of that <laughs> if he looks like Tom Cruise out there. It'd <laughs> be great. Or you just go with Face Off, yes. which is an underrated movie. Yeah. You get the surgery done if you really want to go attend a game in an away game stadium, and then just have him turn it right back around the next time you have the opportunity. That's a great call. That is a great. And by the way, yeah, he, I need to watch that again. Yeah. I mean, when's the last should. time you watched Face Off? Uh, it's been a, probably at least a dozen years. Yeah. By the way, there's no way that Face Off got anything more than well, what's that psycho? Is it rotten avocados or something, Lee? Is that the? Uh, They're probably in California. That makes sense. Yeah. There's no rotten way. Rotten tomatoes everywhere else. There's yeah. no way it's above a forty percent on rotten tomatoes. No chance in hell, right, Lee? Lee. Face Off. I'm looking it up. Rotten tomatoes. You love our internet speed here. Here we go. It's a moment of truth right here. This is compelling stuff, I'm telling you, on a Tuesday oh, morning to start out the oh year. Oh, my. Yeah? That is surprising. 93%. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Hell, take that, Jonas. For face off? Are you serious? The movie you stunk. Nicky Cage? Oh. John Travolta? Which Come on. Audience score 82, but critics, critics 93. That's, that's <laughs> very, very surprising. Well, what did Shawshank get, like 70? That's unbelievable. Ninety three percent from Rotten Tomatoes for Face Off. That's what I'm saying. Go back and watch Face Off. You oh. tell me that's not an incredible movie. All right, well, listen, maybe uh, I mean way maybe before that, it's time. Maybe that's way the move. before it's time. It beats out Shawshank. Shawshank ninety one percent. There you go. Everything you need to know about Rotten Tomatoes exposed right here on the air. Not that, true. That is that is a disgrace. It is a great movie. You go watch Face Off. Tell me that wasn't before it's time. All right. Kind of Te- like Wayne's World. Wayne's World was Listen, way before it's time. David Tepper, you know the rules. All right. The the, the rules of engagement have yeah, been set. Get Face Off. All right. Go go watch Face Off if you want to get prepared to get in an altercation next time in a stadium. It's not an altercation. It's how he avoids it. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, they've avoided. You know what they've avoided in Carolina this year? Wins. Yeah. Yeah. Got him.